Hey guys, this is X tonight. Welcome. We are playing Asago Academy. So this is this is a game. This is an interesting game. Um, this is a game that I've seen making the rounds, and I wanted to Hana. I wanted to uh, have in on it. So <laughs> the thing about this game, um, as you uh, you get to date these guys, um, <laughs> who are all um. No yeah, Normal Boots affiliates? I don't know. Um I don't know, I listened I listened to this uh intro before and like I don't know. Some I don't know, there's just something a little I don't know. Weirdish about it. I don't know. I don't know. But um so yeah, so we're we're doing this. Uh, do, uh, there's there's people there's people popping up. I don't know what to comment on. It's all going by so fast. This is all happening so fast. Um, so I actually uh, I um prior to um downloading this game, uh, I. I think I had heard of like most of these guys. Only I had only I was only really particularly uh, familiar with um, Jontron and PBG and like to a lesser degree um, Pro Jared. Um, so I had to like kind of like look at some video watch. I had to watch some videos and like. Do a little bit of homework. Uh, th th that's okay. A normal boots club. Let's let's play it. Let's do it. Um, chapter one. Um, let's let's go to. Oh, okay. It's just just clicking go. Um, the train made its way along the gentle curve of the coast of Japan, whisking me farther and farther from home. Across from me sat a boy, face half buried in a newspaper. He was deeply entranced in whatever the art, whatever article he was reading, and hadn't spoken a single word to me, even if even when I asked if I could join him in the last compart. Even what? Yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> Sorry, I suck at reading. I don't know why I decided to do this game because I suck at reading. He shrugged, nodded, and adjusted his newspaper without ever making eye contact. It's almost. It had always been an hour, in fact, and he hadn't once looked at me. Devoid of conversation, instead, I took to counting the buttons on the pretent uh, pretentiously flush carmine seat cushions. One, two, three, twenty-one, twenty- You don't know how to count. That's not how you count. Um, now and again, I turned to look out the window where the trees were blurring by. Sometimes the smeared green would break and reveal the quiet blue sea of Japan. This, this game tries to really drive home the point that you're in Japan now. <laughs> um, eventually, this rapidity made my stomach churn, and I went back to cutting, counting the buttons on the seat cushions. 1, 27, 32, 89. When the train compartment shuddered around us, um, I, that sounds creepy, my eyes wandered to the boy in his jacket. It wasn't the school-issued blue that I and the other students on the train were wearing. Instead, it was green. It was a green varsity-like jacket with an embroidered patch poorly sewn on front. Um, hmm. So you're a first year then. He folded his newspaper neatly and sat it in his lap and looked at me with a half-interested gaze. Did, did, did he just catch me staring? Now that the paper was gone, I saw his face. He watched me through heavy-lidded eyes. His hair was immaculately groomed, his teeth straight and blindingly bright. There was something about him, the way the light hit him, that made him look like he was almost spar He is sparkling! <laughs> look! He's just sparkling. Um, maybe, maybe you should stop looking at people through, like, your, your smartphone filters. Me? He glanced around the compartment, empty beside us, and laughed. Oh, I'm, I, no, I'm not first year, I'm a third year. I gotta give voices to these people. But this feels weird, because they actually have voices. I don't know. Um, the train began to slow, metal's wheels groaning against the metal tracks. The sudden shift threatened to rob me of whatever was left in my stomach, but I closed my eyes and took a deep breath, willing myself to keep... That is the most... 
poetic way I've ever heard of anybody <laughs> referring to throwing up. I don't know. What kind of impression would I leave puking on a student before I even arrived at the academy? Uh, the boy frowned. I picked up the hem of my cotton skirt. Don't do that. You're gonna, you're gonna rip it. That's not possible. I've never seen you before. It took me a mouth <laughs> of mouth fishing to find a response. Uh, I, it's because I'm a transfer student. You don't seem too sure about that. <laughs> he laughed again. A transfer student, huh? We don't get many of those. Yeah, you seem pretty suspicious. Maybe you are a first year. Maybe you're like a 27 year old who's not even supposed to be going to the school. What a creep. I don't, I don't approve of this. I removed my acceptance letter from the front pocket of my uniform. The paper, heavy weight, off-white, had accumulated creases from my reading and rereading as if the words might have changed since the last time I read. You ever do that? <laughs> I do that. I don't know. Um, the boy took it, studied it, and handed it back to me. I'll see you around. Okay. I'll see you around, too. Well, then I... Uh, okay. Yeah. T okay. Uh, he smiled at me as he picked up the suitcase lying next to him. By the time I hiccuped a response, he was already gone from the compartment. Maybe maybe if you would like actually like enunciate your words, maybe people would listen to you. I I'm one to talk. Um I stared out the empty hallway of the train. It was then that I realized he, having got it off my acceptance letter, knew my name, and I never got his. Well, that sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> um, the train settled at the station, and I filed out with the rest of the uniformed students. It was early April, and the last frost of winter had come and gone. The trees were already green, and their leaves, sh their leaves shivering at the occasional gusts wave weaving through them. The air was mild, only a few clouds hanging in the sky. I walked- oh, there's birds and stuff. Uh, people, ugh. Um, I walked along the road with a swarm of blue jacketed bodies looking at the little groups breaking off from the crowd. Everyone was buzzing about so me, buzzing. Everyone was buzzing so animated around me, and that's when I realized they were bees, and I was in trouble. <laughs> um, I held my suitcase tight in my sweaty hands. It was leather bound and worth more than anything it contained. <laughs> Maybe, maybe you shouldn't spend, you should either spend more on clothes or not spend so much on suitcases. Um, let's get one of those fucking duffel bags. Who gives a shit? Um, it wasn't that far to the school. And I was, for, oh, and I was for maybe the first time in my life thankful that I own, what I own didn't amount to much. My school issued black oxfords click, click, clicked on the pavement. I walked- what- what the fuck you got? Tap shoes? Like, don't you have, like, rubber soles on your shoes? I don't know. Um, I walked this walk over and over in my mind. So many nights I lay awake, imagining what it would be like to walk from the train station to Asagawa Academy this first time. My new start. I always imagined that everything would change for me on this walk. That- that somehow, everything would magically be different. But as I looked around, nothing ha I realized nothing had changed. Um, I hadn't changed. Well, um, by the time I reached the massive gate to the acad academy, I forgot about all about the disappointment slouching in the back of my throat. Sorry. This this is like strangely like well written for a. They call it a visual novel. It's I don't know. I don't know if you call it a visual novel or a dating game. I don't know. It's one of those two. So, but like, it's it's strangely like well written for this genre of game. Anywho, uh, the school framed by the gates, twisting black metal, was just as beautiful as the glossy photos I saw on his pamphlets. This was it, Asagao Academy. I should. I do. Um, can I? Oh, um, nope. Uh, let's, let's save here. Sure. I thought I could, like, back. Is there a way to go back? I don't know if there is. Um, what it... Uh. Oh! Ha 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 We can, like, look at stuff. Okay. Anywho. <laughs> I glanced around. A swarm of students gathered around the gate. Beyond it, Tiny blue people bounced around the academy's main building. Who- Did you go to a school of, like, gnomes or something? B 
because what the fuck? <laughs> a girl pressed a button to one side of the gate and the excitement in the air was almost palpable. A few moments later, the black gate with great effort creaked outwards and cleared the pathway. The rest of the group shifted into motion. I followed along, a sheep in the herd. My stomach tied itself in nuts. You should maybe get that checked out. That doesn't, that doesn't sound like it's healthy. Um, the crowd split off in different directions. For a moment, I panicked. Oh, hi, dude. A tired-looking man with graying hair called out for first years, a cluster of fresh-faced students gathering around him. <laughs> hey, hey, look at that girl. I turned. A few feet away, a small group of boys were pointing at me and snickering. Pink hair, are you kidding me? How desperate can you get- Um, for what? I don't know what. Hot shame crawled down my neck. I attached myself to a group of girls following a few steps behind them. In the distance, cicadas hummed in the time- What? I thought it was April. Is it April or summer? Like, late summer. There are no cicadas in April. Um, my hair. It wasn't my fault that my hair looked like this. Luckily, I found myself at the girls' dormitory, a large sign on the lawn reading Primrose House. The building dwarfed me in size and sh- I, um, what? I mean, you're like this tall and the- I don't know. How many students did Asagawa- oh yeah, that was the other thing. Um, Asagawa, just for, um, for, for whatever, I don't know what I want to say. Asagao uh, means morning glory, like the flower. Asa meaning morning, gao or kao meaning face. Um, and that's the, that's the flower. I approached the building. As I approached the building, a red-headed girl lingering nearby caught my attention. I looked away, then looked back. She was staring at me. Oh, don't, don't stare at me. I don't like it. She walked over. Um, oh. Um, I, I guess so. Um, I eyed her warily. She was smiling and bouncing in a way that suggested her views on life were akin to a perpetual bouncy castle. Her views on life were akin to a... So... <laughs> I... A colorful and shaped like a castle? I don't know. <laughs> what? Me? Uh... Oh, bingo. Um, of course, you silly. Let me ge guess. Room 325? I thought back to the paper I received a month prior with a list of all the supplies I needed for the year and my dorm arrangements. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> she laughed, but I couldn't figure out what was so funny. Was she laughing at me? Um, I need to give these people voices. When I found out my roommate was a transfer student, I knew you were going to be a... T I you know what? I've seen so many people do these that it's like, I feel like I'm copying all- This is why I never watch other people do Let's Plays, because I always- I'm afraid that I'm gonna copy everyone. And now I'm, like, doing exactly that. I'm commenting on the same shit, and I'm doing the same fucking voices. Uh, I gotta think of a different voice for Red here. Um, when I found out my roommate was a transfer student, I knew you were gonna be a total main character. I'm sorry. I, a what? When I saw you outside the gate, I knew it was you. I mean, look at that hair. I felt a lump forming in, forming, forming in my throat. What was she talking about? She had to be making fun of me. I hadn't spent more than five minutes on campus, and I was already being mocked. My hands began to tremble. Is, is there something wrong with my hair? Her face slackened from its amused smile to a more worried expression. Yeah, we don't allow fucking die jobs at this school. Um. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. Is there a way to... Uh... Okay. Oh, I went back. There's something wrong with my hair. Oh, okay. Um. And then she began to laugh again. <laughs> Okay, but why don't why don't you just you don't you just take it, Red? I I don't even have to do anything. I don't even have to talk. Just <clears throat> you must be Hi, Mai Sasaki. I bowed my head. Hello. It's nice to meet you, Mai. 
All your school book. I gotta give her a voice. All, all your school books are waiting in our room with your welcome letter. Um. And I read the envelope. I don't know what. I, I don't know what I'm. I'm trying to think of a voice. I hope you're not mad. My started walking towards the dorm's door. Uh, front doors. I followed like a lost puppy. Did you get. Did you check in at the front desk already? No, I didn't. I didn't know I was supposed to. <laughs> Good. They'll, they'll offer to have a staff member give you a tour around campus, but I I can show you around. We don't get many transfer students in a y uh, year three, you know. That's weird. Um, oh, is that your only bag? Just the one? I'm glad I brought an extra bag of stuff to decorate a room with. I already started. I hope you don't mind. But I did want to string the lights. I thought we could do it together, you know. She spoke quickly, words bubbling from her mouth. Yeah, what, what, she got fucking rabies or something? <laughs> I left me no time to answer until the end of her monologue. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. She held the door, front door open for me, and I hurried inside. Ooh, it's all, it's all, like, pink and white. Um, <laughs> um, girls filled up, filed up and down the hallway, howling greetings and exchanging vague nice cities <laughs> that were more often than not how was your break and look how tan you got I'm really confused as to the time of year it is cause like it's it's like between year break and it's like Mar I don't know maybe they like went somewhere I don't know I don't know whatever I don't know we're, we're in we're in the the um ambiguous month of a pray you lie a pray you lie eastus um, I followed Mai as she led me through the maze of students and up to and up two flights of stairs. Each dorm f floor lo looked the same with its as the last. Narrow white doors lining both sides of the pale pink walls. Thin gold numbers were tacked onto the front of each, with the numbers rising as we climbed. That, that, that's how floors work. You're not missing anything with the campus tour, I promise. Mr. Saitomo does, does them every year, and he's, like, totally dull. He drags you around to the entire camp campus and talks in that weird, squeaky voice of his. I, gotta, I guess I gotta give him the squeaky voice or something. I'll tell you everything you need to know. Um, I smiled, trying to let this calm my nerves. Thanks. We headed down the, the a hallway on the third floor. My stopped us in front of a door number 325. Here we are! A faint smell of potpourri wafted through my through the room. The walls, like the hallway, were a soft, powdery pink. My already defaced them with a tapestry of posters, magazine cutouts, and photographs. Um, in indeed. Um, some of the photos were of cats, but most of them were male models and rugged uh, musicians. Um, obsession, Elfenstein. <laughs> Wait, who is this? War tortured souls. The only, oh, the only my guitar under oh the world tour only my guitar understands me. A bunk bed, two writing desks with wooden chairs, a small dresser, and a mirrored vanity, all clearly provided by the school, were the only pieces of furniture in the tiny. The only pieces of furniture, like that's a lot of furniture to just have. When I when I went abroad to school. Well, she's not abroad, but when I went to live in a dorm, all I had was a bed and a writing desk. Like, that's it. You're fucking lucky. Don't, don't, like... And I mean, you're, like, talking about, oh, I don't have that much money. But, like, you got all this furniture in here. You just don't act like an ungrateful piece of shit, Hana. Fucking. <sighs> the top bunk was already covered in neatly tucked blankets and throw pillows clash of clashing patterns and colors. Um... I mean, they all seem like they're pink. The bottom bunk had a single stiff-looking pillow and a thin cotton blanket that I didn't need to touch to know was horribly itchy. <laughs> I must have grimaced because Mai quickly smiled at me. I brought way too many pillows and blankets. I always overpack. I went to Italy over break and Mom got really mad at me because I brought five bags, but we were only there for a week. <laughs> she laughed and pulled several blankets and pillows out from her bunk and rearranged them Neatly onto my aw, it's nice of you. A sudden twinge of guilt and embarrassment hit me. There, that's much better. Uh, thanks, my. 
I placed my suitcase on the bottom bunk and began to unpack its contents. Several changes of clothing, pens and pencils, empty notebooks, a few photographs of my father. A dilapidated stuffed rat- Dilapidated? Can you use that to describe a stuffed animal? I don't know. Stuffed rabbit. An old portable radio and a small black box. What? Black box? I don't know. My opened the curtains and the sunlight poured in. So, where are you from? I slid the now empty suitcase under the bottom bunk. Uh, about two hours north of here, it's a small town called Amaririsu. Amaririsu? Something. You probably never haven't heard of it. I set the stuff for Abbott, Mr. P good, good, creative name. <laughs> On the side. Um, something purple throw. Oh! Uh, did you go to a different boarding school, or...? No, I went to a public school down the street from my house. I don't- I don't know why her inter- Really? Yeah, really. It sucked. Um, <laughs> um, um, oh, I forgot what I was gonna say. I don't know. I don't, yeah, no, I don't know why her internal voice is different from her talking voice. I feel like reading the whole thing in that voice would be annoying, but anyway, um, we're just getting into this right now, um, but we're at about 20 minutes. You know, let's go for a half hour. Why not? Have the first episode be longer episode, because we're, we're just getting into stuff. A public school. What was that like? What were the were the students mean? Did you have a lot of friends? I always went to private schools. My parents work a lot, and my dad goes overseas, so they stuck me here. I think they stuck me here for convenience. Oh, hey, what's that? I removed an ornately patterned origami crane from the black box and was setting it underneath the unclaimed writing desk. <laughs> Oh, this my mother made it for me a long time ago. I set it beside a stack of thick books, which I assumed were provided for me. Aww. Wow, it's so pretty. I've never seen paper like that before. <gasps> oh yeah, the lights. Let me get them. Aww. What? Oh, I, I I hit back. Um, my went to her own desk, opened the drawer, and pulled out a long tangled string of fairy lights. I thought these would look nice. Here, help me string them up. She grabbed a container of pushpins and pulled her wooden desk chair and over out and over to one wall. I did the same with my own. Just sorry. <laughs> we pinned the lights around the perimeter of the room. How was the train ride over? Did you meet anyone? Um, no, not really. I was in a compartment with some guy and some guy, huh? Was he cute? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't even get his name. <laughs> I seemed disappointed for a moment, then perked back up. You'll have to point him out to me if you see him again. Uh, okay. When we finished stringing the lights, Maya climbed down from her chair and brushed her hands together triumphantly. Yeah. Done. Okay, now it's time for lunch. The food here is pretty good. There's this... The food here is pretty good. There's this ramen place down the street from... From campus that's like out of this world. But the only... The only school... Ugh, I'm sorry, I messed up. The school only lets us leave campus on the weekends. Um, Maya walked to the window. We could go today because it's Sunday and it's pretty nice out. I guess... But I guess you might want to go to the cap since you just got here. We could... <laughs> wow. Hi, hi, psycho. <laughs> she suddenly interrupted my own enthusiastic laughter. Oh my gosh, Mimi Santos just totally tripped outside and fell on her face. I saw it. <laughs> oh, is that mean to laugh? Maybe I shouldn't have. Um, oh well. Anyway, let's go eat. I'm totally starved. Okay. So, uh, so she led me out of the room before I even had a chance to respond. Okay. The cafeteria was buzzing with, like, all the bees that tried to attack me when I first came to the school. Uh, only people as nervous-looking as I felt... The only people as nervous-looking as I felt were the tables of skittish, wide-eyed first years. I stepped into line behind Mai, taking an empty plastic tray. We shuffled through, asking for helpings from the... Sulky cafeteria workers, when we passed something that looked good. With full trays, 
My led me straight to a table in the back where a few students were already sitting. I'm sorry. Um, Mai sat down and I took a seat across from her. Hi, Mai. How was your break? It was good. I went to Italy and Spain. I felt Dad fell off a jet ski, a ski jet, and broke his ankle. Uh -huh. It's better now, though. <laughs> oh, well, that's nice. I expected to be introduced, but the girl turned back to her group of friends, and Mai turned back to me. She began to assault her food with a fork and tell me in a uh, practically minute-by-minute -minute account about her fleeting romance last summer with a boy she met on the beach that didn't go further than a few salty kisses. Ew. Gross. <laughs> I sat back and let my talk. For the first time since arriving on campus, I felt like I was finally able to breathe. I picked up my Brussels sprout. You have a choice of, like, any, like, a whole bunch of food, and you go with Brussels sprouts. Fuck is wrong with you, Hana. Fuck is wrong. I I know why. I don't know. Um. Oh. Uh. Derp. Uh. Study it. And study my as she spoke. The more she talked, the more I began to notice small details about her. She had a high songbird voice. Uh, I guess I got her voice right. Um. She was dynamic. She was dynamic. Her face twisting this way and wet that into exaggerated expressions as she spoke. She seems like she resents that comment. She laughed often. She imitated people in wildly unflattering voices and seemingly unrelated to her actual opinion of them. Um, this is kind of like what I'm doing right now. Most notably, she talked. A lot. I didn't find this particularly annoying as it filled the silence and she hardly ever asked questions that required my full attention. Just as Maya was rounding off a shockingly detailed account of the time she accidentally walked in on her friend's older brother in the act of changing. <laughs> I saw a, a flash of familiar green caught my eye. I glanced over. Hey, that's him. Huh? Who? I leaned across the table to whisper just in case he could hear me through the ambient chatter of the lunchroom. A boy from the train. That's him. <laughs> Jared? Uh, yeah, with the weird green jacket and the swoopy hair. He just picked up his tray and seemed, uh, as, and was walking past us when something seemed to catch his eye. Um, the, that'd be us. Hmm, oh, you. Um, I looked up at him, suddenly realizing he was talking to me. Hana. Hana. Hana, I met you on the train. How are things? How are things settling down for you? Really well, I found my roommate. She's been helping me out. I gestured to Mai, who was thunderstruck. In fact, looking around, everyone was. People stopped eating to turn and stare at Jared and me. My shoulders bunched around my neck. I, I like that. I like that description. That's like a. That's very. I don't know. I like that description. Um. Well, if you ever need any help, I'll be around. Third year, right? I nodded. So, some of my friends are here in that year. Of course, they can't compare to me, but I'll give them a heads up, the heads up to look out for you. Um, he flashed a dazzling smile, then winked. It's the least I can do for such a cute girl. <laughs> like <in> my... <laughs> well, see you. <laughs> I watched a torrent of guys raging through my head. I watched as I watched a torrent of guys raging. Uh, guy, I'm oh, sorry. I I keep like screwing up the order of these. I watched as the torrent of thoughts raging through my head as he took a seat next to a bunch of guys who were all wearing the same jacket. Th that's Jared. She tore her eyes away from him and looked at me. He's so cute. <laughs> He's the most beautiful guy in school. Wow, someone was a fan of Pro Jared. Oh, Jared. I can't believe he just looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at Mai. Her cheeks were glowing in an indecent pink. Um. <clears throat> Why do they all wear those jackets? Aren't all the guys supposed to wear blue blazers as part of their uniform? She's not wearing a blue blazer. No, they're allowed to. There. You. You know. You know Jared. The girl turned back around and was looking at me with sudden interest. I. 
Did I know him? I only talked to him on the train for a few minutes, so not really. We weren't friends or anything. But looking around, Molly and this girl weren't the only ones who were interested. Everybody seemed to be listening in. They were. They seemed so surprised when he talked to me. Maybe a little white lie couldn't hurt? Um... I... Yeah, I, I really don't like lying, so we don't really know each other. Not really. Oh. She looked at me up and down, sniffed and turned away. Well, fuck you too, bitch. Maya leaned towards me. Don't mind Mimi. She was just trying to get in with you. Well, she sounds like a bitch anyway. Get in with me. Why? Well, you asked about those guys in their jackets, right? Uh-huh. Those are the normal boots... Club jack. Normal boots club jacket. Sorry. They're... What? What? Um, hello? Hello? Sound? Sound? Where did you go? Where did the sound go? Normal boots club. Oh! Oh, uh, that's where the sound went. Huh? Um, it's a club... It's a club we have at school here. It's like totally exclusive and only and full of only the coolest students. They get together and play video games or something. <laughs> like, like that sounds like the coolest club you ever heard. I know. I that, no, I, I don't know what I'm saying, but like, not stereotypically, that's not what you would think of like the cool club or something. <clears throat> that one right there is John, also known as John Tron, and his bird's name is Jacques. Oh, he's got a little jacket on. <laughs> John is also the president of the drama club here at school. Okay? Next to him is PBG, and he and John founded the Normal, Blu Normal Blutes Normal Blutes Club together. PBG is the one of the best soccer players on our team. Okay. Um, and there there goes my knowledge. <laughs> <clears throat> then there's Gerard. People call him the completionist because he's obsessed with completing things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He has the biggest itty bitty kitty collection I've ever seen. Wow. <laughs> okay. Next to him is Jared, also known as Pro Jared. He's a model. Yeah, someone someone really had something for Jared in this <laughs> this script. Then there's Satchbag, but everyone calls him Satch. He's like crazy smart. Okay. Those guys over there are Paul, Nick, and Josh. They write a column in the newspaper called Continue. Oh yeah, their their channel is uh, Continue. Um, Paul, the one standing up, is the student council president. Okay? And the guy on the end there is Shane. He knows more about video games than anyone ever. Um, um, okay. So, we met the normal boots guys. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit on that in the next video, but we're at about a half hour, so, um, that'll be it for this one. So, thank you for watching. Hopefully, I will see you in the next video, and goodbye to you all, sirs and madams, and everyone in between.